Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and I have a special guest on with us tonight, Fringe. And uh, I ran across her on some very fascinating interviews uh, that she's done, one podcast and one particular interview uh, more recently. And then I messaged her on Twitter, and I asked her if she'd be willing to join us here on Israeli News Live because we've had uh, some very interesting guests along the lines of... Uh, uh, abductions, uh, alien things, Ron Gunter being the the more uh, recent one that we had on that issue there. But uh, Fringe has got some fascinating things and things that actually concur with information that I'm uh, privy to. And uh, so I can't wait to to get to talking to her here and, and share that, let her just speak away and share her testimony with you. So Fringe, thank you for joining me. You can tell us a little bit about yourself, and uh, and I didn't think to ask you before coming on. I don't know if you've ever written a book or anything, or or you know a way for people to be able to support what you do if you do that. Uh, but just share that information with us, and we'll also put that in the description below. Well, thank you, Stephen. I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm not writing a book. I am on Twitter. So Twitter X you can find me at fringe.com on Twitter. Um, if anybody wanted to reach out, I do answer uh, direct messages. And um, so I put a lot of my information out there. Um, I have a website as well. Um, it's linked there on Twitter, but no book or anything. But I certainly appreciate your offer for that. Thank you. You're very welcome. So if you had written a book, I can tell you one thing. It would be it would it would sell like crazy here because any authors that's ever comes on here, which we that's always what they've told us. They said I sell more books when I come on here than I even do when I went on with Alex Jones or something like that. So uh fascinating. You you though have had a very interesting uh life from an early age. And um, I know that uh, it, well, I'm not even going to even try to go into that. If you can just kind of give us a background of how you've come to the to the part of your life where you are now. Well, uh, so I'll start where I am now. So where I am now, I'm 55 years old. Um, I've been married for 26 years. I'm a grandmother. Uh, I'm just a regular person living a regular life. I had a career in law enforcement um, for most of my adult life. I did quite some time there at a major metropolitan uh, police department. And it wasn't, I have, I have led an interesting life. Um, but it wasn't until about this last year, um, maybe 18 months to two years, that I actually found myself in a very strange position of trying to do my best at fighting off what we would call uh, aliens or what the UFO community calls aliens and being involved in this alien abduction phenomenon. Um, it's not a place I thought I would ever find myself, even though I'd had many interesting incidents over my years, I had never put any of it together until very recently. So I'm actually pretty new to the topic. I'm pretty new to even, uh, even admitting to myself what is going on. This is something I came to very reluctantly. I'm a, a logical, analytical person. I was in law enforcement. I like to deal with facts and evidence. And uh, this is something that's pretty far out there for most people to even wrap their minds around, including myself. So um, I've just kind of come to this recently, even admitting to myself that this is what was happening. Um, but it did start, it did start very young. And when I really started looking back at my life and I realized the many strange things that had happened to me, it really shouldn't have been the surprise that it ended up being. So my very first encounter, I was three and a half years old. Um, I had been born to an unwed mother in a home for unwed mothers and sent to foster care. And it, it's it's a very long story that I'll try to make short, but my foster brother ended up adopting me as my father. And my father was in the military. He was um, on a nuclear submarine. And so I ended up in New London, Connecticut with my father deployed. And at about three and a half years old, I think my sister had been born by that time. She was very young. And the first time I saw aliens was just outside a base in New London, Connecticut. We were living in an apartment just off the base. And I woke up one night completely paralyzed um, with two very tall, skinny, white creatures standing in the doorway of my bedroom. 
Um, can when, when you talk about tall, skinny, white creatures, uh, can you give uh, maybe a more detailed description of what they look like as far as, I mean, some people talk about seeing grays and I know there's tall grays or shorter grays. There's, uh, there's, there's, and were they actually clothed or would, would they be what we would consider unclothed? So I only have certain memories from this incident. And what I remember was that they were very tall and very, very skinny. And they were super skinny because there was two of them were standing in the doorway. And tall to a three and a half year old, they were filling up the doorway with their height. And then they were both standing in the doorway together, which tells me they were very skinny. I've actually since come across some images that look very similar. But I was a kid. And what I mainly saw was the whiteness. There was a white light coming in through the window behind me. And so I couldn't even tell you what their faces looked like specifically. Um, so a lot of it was just very white and two figures standing in the doorway that were not human. But at the age of three and a half, you know, I don't even know what I thought they were at that time. I just knew it was something strange. Um, I can tell you, I, I didn't feel afraid. Um, I don't remember feeling afraid. I just remember being very, just paralyzed. I couldn't move. Um, so my memory of that incident is very short and um, it's not all that detailed because I, I only know what I know. Um, and then after that incident, so I can't tell you I was abducted that night or not abducted that night. The research would say yes, that those encounters, a lot of times people are seeing um, the beginning or the ending of, of an encounter. And a lot of times people have no memory of what's actually happening in between. So I don't know what happened that night, but this is just a childhood memory that I, I've always had. And I've never spent a lot of time really thinking about it until recently. Um, and then I, I, I did have another very strange entity that I came across when I was a kid. I was probably seven or eight years old and I had this entity. Um, it reminded me now as an adult, I have come across this image of baby Groot. And this entity reminded me of baby Groot. And this thing was something most people would probably refer to as an imaginary friend. Um, he used to live in a almost a kangaroo looking pouch in the in my left hand, right in between my first finger and the thumb. And he would come out and run around on my hand and we would have, you know, conversations, but not with words. And um, of course, and I even remember as an adult, when I told my husband this story, I would tell him, I know everybody's going to say this is an imaginary friend, but I would swear in court that this was real. This was happening during the middle of the day. Most of the time it would be happening when I was walking home from school. Um, I played a lot by myself out in the woods when I was a little kid and he would pop up all the time. And this was, it was just a thing. Now, what I do know in hindsight, and people have probably heard me say on other interviews, is now in hindsight, after speaking to researchers who have gone through a lot of the things that have happened to me in my life, this is actually very common um, for these entities to present themselves as a cartoon character or something that's enticing for children. So in all likelihood, this was a gray um, that was presenting itself as something else because this is what they do. Now, I will never know. I'll never know what this entity was. Um, I can never tell you for sure what it was. Um, but the research shows that a lot of times the greys are presenting to children as cartoon characters and as fun, fun characters to kind of entice children into a relationship. Well, so you know, the odd thing is too, is when you mentioned that, you mentioned that size, uh, the subject came up one day when I was discussing some things with some of the people that I know that have gone through very similar to what you're talking about. And, and some of the evidence has been, um, I don't know if you'd say uh, documented, but not documented, where it's publicly documented that uh, even things like fairies, they actually exist They're you know, and yet they're very small. They look nearly the size of an insect. Uh you know, but also, too, another thing that I find fascinating is, like you said, they have the ability, and this is true, this is something that I've heard even from the intelligence world, that the grace have the ability to cause your mind to perceive 
uh, an image of something uh, to be totally opposite of what you're actually, of what maybe really is there. Um, and that is a, a capability that they do have. So what you're saying is not anything that would be unusual. Right. So I, of course, didn't know that at the time, um, but I know it now. And so, again, this is just an incident that happened to me as a kid that I would have always sworn was real and that this actually happened and that this was a thing. And um, I, I only found out later that this is probably all related, that these two incidents are probably related. Um, so. The next thing that um, was strange in my life was the first time I ever saw this creature called the Hat Man. I was about 17 years old, um, and this was in a time when there was no internet. I had never heard of Hat Man or a shadow being or, or anything, really. And um, so I had an encounter with this very tall uh, shadow that came from the doorway and came and laid on top of me. I thought... I was dying. Um, it was incredibly frightening incident. And next thing I knew it was gone. Uh, so that happened when I was about 17. And then throughout my entire adult life, these shadow beings um, were all over all the time, everywhere. Um, I had many encounters with them. If I even took three to four encounters a year over 37 years, because I'm 55 years old now, that's 100 plus encounters with these shadow beings. And so I spent most of my adult life knowing that I was dealing with these shadow beings and I am a Christian. I was born and raised a Christian. I've always had um, very strong Christian faith. And the first time I saw this thing when I was 17, I immediately thought this is demonic. This is something very evil uh, coming at me. It gave, it gave off a very intense uh, evil feeling. And I thought it was killing me. And so, of course, you know, I put it into that category. And I, right. I think that's fairly, fairly understandable. Um, and then I, I dealt with them over the next decade or decade plus. And um, this is something that also happens to my siblings. I now know that this is also happens to my mother. Um, so it definitely runs in the family. And it's something that I tried everything to stop. Um, the very first thing I did, of course, was call out uh, in the name of Jesus. I said things like, get thee behind me, Satan. You know, I commanded these things off of me and away from me in every manner I knew how to do. And I'm sorry to say it never worked for me. Um, well, so yes, if you don't mind, let me I'd like to address that a little bit, because I do. There, there have been many, many Christians that I have seen before and being a Christian myself. Uh, when I've interviewed different people that have been abducted, I remember uh, Gary Lowry being one of those. And Gary is uh, uh, very well known, I think, amongst the UFO community. And Gary had uh, at one point spoke about, you know, or some people had been saying to him, you know, well, if you were a real Christian, you would rebuke them in the name of Jesus and they would leave you. And I, I actually differ with that because... Not to say that maybe in some cases you you may have success with that. I I, I run into a lot of that. Um, I think you're when you're dealing with evil spirits. Even Jesus talks about you know resist the devil and he'll flee. Now if that means if you're resisting him, it doesn't say how long it's going to take to resist him before he leaves. You know that's that's kind of like ignoring something. But in a case like this here, I often think about you know if even at the most famous story of all, Job. Everybody knows that Job, you know, God allowed Satan to just have have havoc in this man's life. And we just think of it as like no big deal. But the guy's house blows down. His kids are all killed. I mean, everything you can think of is taken away from him. And it seems relentless. You know, how long and how many years maybe did this take place for this man? Uh, if you take Adam and Eve and and what happened there? Uh, you take Jesus. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days with the devil, and he couldn't get rid of him, you know, and it was a constant battle. All we see is a few little things that they battle over during that time, but still, 
40 days and 40 nights he's there in the wilderness and the devil is constantly bombarding him. Uh, and But what we have is a little bit recorded. So, you know, you know, people have really got to think about what they're saying. You know, it's quick to eat is, or it's very easy to judge someone from a perspective that you've never had to encounter yourself, but encounter the situation and then see how things go, because maybe you're going through something for a reason in this life. Who knows really the reason behind it, but I wouldn't be so quick to judge uh, you or anyone else that has gone through something like this, uh, because we don't know what the end game is with all of this. Yeah, and I appreciate um, hearing that, because this was something that actually sent me into a, a spiral. Um it sent me into a spiritual crisis, actually. And it, it wasn't back then when I was in my 20s, 30s, 40s. It was actually very recently. But there's nothing worse than being told you're not a child of God if these things are happening to you. You must not be right with Jesus if these things are happening to you. You must not be being a very good Christian. You must not have enough faith. Uh, these are all the things that were told to me when these things were happening. And I was I was reaching out to people. that I was trying to get help. And uh, yeah, it, it was absolutely. And, and the thing is, think about it, friend. Just the opposite of what they're saying. If you look at Job, just the simple case, right? God had so much love for that man, for his strong stand as a Christian. That you know, that he gets into this debate with Satan about you know, he says, Satan says, Well, you got a hedge built up all around him. Of course, there's nothing going to happen. Just let me have him for a little bit, and I'll have him cursing you to your face before it's over with. You know, maybe it's the other way around in your case. Maybe because you've been a steadfast Christian, things have been allowed to happen to you because he knows, regardless, even if the, the worst things that could possibly ever happen in this uh, this unseen realm, per, per se, you're not going to cave in. You're not going to bend. You're not, even though you went through that battle, you still came out on the other side. You didn't lose the fight. And that fight yeah. still may go on. But I appreciate that. Um, you have no idea how much I appreciate that. I, I appreciate hearing that. and. Uh, yeah, gosh, if I have any advice for Christians, um, and people get really upset when I say this. First of all, is this making you crazy? Because I think the sun is coming in my bedroom, you know, this room now. Oh, Do you, you know what's funny? That? It's funny it's when you say that, right? <laughs> I thought it was part of the, because uh, I know you have a... Um, mm -mm. It's a green screen. Yeah, I know it's a green screen, so I see that light. So I thought it was like lightning or something, but no, it doesn't <laughs> bother me at all. I it's actually, actually making me crazy. Up. It's yep. making me nuts. <laughs> um, hopefully, it's not too distracting for the audience. It, it, the sun no, will go down, no. and then hopefully it, it goes I, I away. I think most people look at that as like a star or something on you, because okay. your background is like a star anyway. And, it is. Uh, and I actually just thought it was part of the uh, the way it worked or something. I didn't even think anything of it personally. So oh, that's no, funny. not distracting for me. It's the sun coming in the window. Okay. Um, so and what I can do too, when I actually go to upload this, I could actually mm -hmm. cause a little uh, blur in that area right there oh, perfect. on the side of the screen and people will never see it. No way. Perfect. It'll just be me constantly looking at it. Um, so to get back to the topic, I, this is something that is near and dear to my heart. And I'm so glad you mentioned this. Um, because I cannot tell you how damaging it is. Number one, it's absolutely false. But number two, I ended up in a literal battle for my soul, and I'm sure we'll get to that later, um, with these entities. And part of their strategy was convincing me that I was never a Christian, I had no faith, that I was not a child of God, that I was theirs, that they owned me, and that, you know, I, I wasn't going to heaven. There was, you know, forget Jesus. You know, I, I'm not a child of God. That is not your place. You're actually with us. And so, and it was devastating, devastating for me. So if you're a Christian, please, number one, think about the things like what you just said, Stephen, let's think about it. Let's be logical about right. this. Does that make any sense at all? Is Satan going after the people who are already his, or is he going after the people who aren't? And to tell somebody that if you have demonic attacks, or in this case, alien and demonic attacks for me, 
you're not a Christian, you don't have enough faith, you must not believe in Jesus, uh, or get right. I was told, get right with Jesus, and this won't happen to you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> get right with Jesus. I, I And look, we're all human, right? Yes. But I was as right as G- with Jesus as I could possibly be, and this was happening to me. So thank you for bringing that up. It's something that's really important. I, I like to bring it up a lot. My, some of my biggest haters are Christians. Because they and assume that, and that that's so sad. Yeah. Right. It's 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 not only is it sad, it's damaging. Uh you 100%. have no idea as a Christian when you begin to say things like that to people that have gone through these things, the damage that you do to those people, uh, to people that have that have suffered these things, and yet you don't realize that, like I said, maybe that, you know, God is so pleased with that person that, you know, that they're going to, they're going through that trial of fire. And, and of course, you know, the devil can't say the truth anyway. So when they're like in, in Fringe's case, when she's being held wherever she's at at the time, and they're pumping all these lies into her head, they're trying to break her. They're trying to break her soul. And, uh, and we will, maybe we will get into this issue about souls and stuff like that later, because that is, I know that is something that they want, because they want control of of your body uh, for their own gain and purpose. And, and you have definitely proven that they've never been able to pull that off. Oh, but they were close. They were close. And I will tell you right now that um, we spoke a little bit before the show. I would have bet my faith up against anyone on the planet except for Christ himself. No joke. And uh, they almost got me. So that's what we're up against. And and I don't want to sound arrogant, but if they can almost get me, they can almost get you too, uh, to anyone else who's listening. And it's probably the only thing that I can even get emotional about when it comes to this topic is how devastating it can be for a Christian to tell me, oh, you need to get right with Jesus and this will stop. Oh, thank you very much. Well, you know, the thing is that we just pray that they never have to encounter what you've encountered and what probably many other people have encountered. Uh, I want to ask you a question, too, on this uh, this very issue, Fringe, is that in the interview that I listened to uh, today that you were in, in what was very fascinating to me is that you noted that what we call aliens and demons are not the same. Uh, can you, can you, you did no more blinkety blinkety there. So, <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Fine. Go lay down. Leave me alone. All right. I petted you. Be happy. I feel like Noah sometimes. I used to have two cats, two dogs, two ducks, two chickens. And where I went, they all followed me. (laughs) So that's my daughter's uh, contribution to her father. All right. So here we go. So we're going to go back. I'm going to ask that question again. All right. So question I wanted to ask you before I got interrupted by the dog. uh, And and that is... uh, I, in the interview I listened to today that you were in, you spoke about there's a difference between demons or evil spirits, we might say, and that of alien entities. Now, I actually already knew that myself as well, but that's from some very deep uh, deep insight communications through uh, that world that I've been involved in for a long time. And uh and we've discussed a lot of that. We've discussed a lot of that, where they come from. And I might, I'll go ahead and add to while I'm at it to save another question that you can speak about too. And that is a lot of what we call aliens are from the earth itself. Uh, there's many, uh, many colonies, and I actually know where several of those colonies are within the oceans. Uh, we have them within inner earth as well. Um, and I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, especially some communities, and I don't mean to offend anybody, but it's just the truth of the matter. So, um, and then we have interdimensional. That's another side that we have too, because we have video footage, not that I don't think it's ever been made public, but there's video footage where, uh, what we would call alien spacecraft coming down. And as it, just as it gets to the earth, it looks like it's going to crash into the earth, but it's gone. And it's just because it's not, it's just we're seeing it in our dimension briefly and then gone again. So anyway, 
All right, I'm going to give you that platform to talk about that, please. Yeah, so, um, gosh, where do I go with that? So when I first started realizing what was happening to me, um, I thought I was dealing with aliens from outer space, and I sometimes refer to them as our space brothers. Um, you know, something that's maybe neutral, maybe even benevolent, Um Maybe they're needing our genetics to help their genetics. You know, I hadn't really stopped to think about it too much. But I, um, as a Christian, by the way. Can I interrupt you just for a moment? Absolutely. I'm one more in there, just for your knowledge, because I know you spoke about this as well. And then that way you can just take it all the way through. You mentioned in, in that interview as well about that the, a lot of abductees are actually taking both men and women because that they're using their genetics or they're, they're making a a hybrid uh, species. They come, they take the child back out at an early age. All that is very true, by the way. Uh, government is very much well aware of all this stuff happening. It's not like it's anything new to them. They do know that that's happening. Uh, so, yes. Uh, that's very true as well. And another issue is besides that particular project, there are certain species, especially in the reptilian community, to where they reptilians don't have as much, I, I shouldn't say especially, I should say the opposite of that. They don't have as much problem with their breeding program, but like in the case of other ones like Palladians, et cetera, uh, they don't, they have a very difficult time reproducing. And so they like to study uh, humans. Uh, uh, we've never heard of a negative one with them coming back, but uh, but especially with reptilians, it's never pleasant. They do, by the way, they do have the ability to transform the way they appear to humans. Uh, and I heard you mention that. So I'm going to let you kind of carry it away for a little while, but don't knock the speaker over. You might hear my dog barking too. I, I just got a puppy. I can I hear her. I don't hear him, so you're good to go. Don't worry about <laughs> I it. I can hear her down there. Um, so your first question was uh, aliens versus demons kind of thing. So here's where I would go with that. When I, in being a Christian, um, I when I first realized what was happening to me, I, I did think these were space aliens. And I've said before, um, one of the first I got caught up in, and please keep in mind that as a Christian up until the age of maybe 53 or 54 years old, I was very, um, I was very anti-new age. Um, don't look over there. Don't look over there. I, I was very narrowly focused on being a Christian and I was um, a Calvinist. I was reformed. I was as pretty much as hardcore a Christian as you could get. And um, I did not engage in any type of new age practices or even thought or anything like that. That's I was taught straight and narrow type of thing. Yeah, However, for those that don't understand Calvinist is if it's written in the Bible, it's the gospel. But if it's not, you don't touch it. it. No, do not. Do not look over there. Don't look over there. If you don't mess with this stuff. Uh, you're you're fine, right? So Satan is real, but as long as you don't look in his direction, you're not going to attract his attention, kind of a thing. So this isn't this is kind of an involved story, but what started to happen to me is when I realized that I was on this list with these aliens, um, I started getting sucked into this new age uh, thought process. Um, I'm not sure if y'all your audience would be familiar with Elizabeth April or any of these um the new agers who believe the aliens are here to upgrade our consciousness. They're gonna take us to the new earth. You know, they have a similar um narrative, right? They have a similar narrative yes, yes. to Christianity. And, and some people will because our audience is very broad from Christians. We have Christians, Muslims, Jews, you name it. Okay. Every walk of life is is here. Um, you know, in smaller groups naturally, but in some areas, but yeah, there's everything you can think of that will be listening to, to what you're saying. So imagine I now am real. I'm at this point realizing, man, I'm getting taken up into spaceships by aliens. Okay. That's just a whole other topic. You, you can either believe it or not. Right. So yeah. I end up wrapping my mind around this. I'm coming to, uh, trying to come to an understanding of what's happening. I end up going down this road new age stuff, manifestation, um, 
the aliens are here to help us. They're going to ascend us to the 5D, to the new earth. It's, it's a very new agey type message of, but it's a lot of these people claim to be Christians. Um, you know, the Bible never taught us about manifesting, but that's all prayer really is. And, you know, just a bunch of new age type thinking. I would totally went down that rabbit hole. And so the first time I ever heard a Christian speak about aliens, it was um, a man by the name of Ray Boucher. And Ray Boucher was on a podcast, and I believe the podcast is called Cultish. And on this podcast, Ray Boucher started discussing that he, and I can't remember whether he said aliens are demons or he was equating them with demons or saying they were demonic. And the first thing I thought was, it, that's ridiculous. I have dealt with the demonic, which my perception at that time would have been these shadow beings, right? And I've dealt with aliens and they are not the same thing. And by the way, this is something that will very much upset Christians. If I want to go to list number two of things that will upset Christians is trying to tell them that aliens are not demons. Um, because two Christians, aliens are demons. That's it, period. It's just, that's just how it is. And so I knew I was not dealing with demons. And when I first heard Ray Boucher say that they were demons, I just said, and, and I don't, I don't want to put words in his mouth. Um, the idea that aliens or demons are demons are together. I thought it was absurd. I, I actually thought it was ridiculous. I thought this man has no idea what he's talking about. This is ridiculous. And so what ends up happening to me is I end up getting to a point where, and, and I think I said this yesterday, it's actually embarrassing considering my investigative background and my time in law enforcement. It's actually embarrassing how long it took me to realize that these, this was all a big lie that these aliens, these so-called aliens are, it's all a big lie. They're not from outer space. Uh, they're from right here. They're from right here on the earth. And, you know, maybe there are some from outer space. I'm not saying there is no life on any other planet, but these beings, in my personal opinion, are from right here. They're able to uh, kind of go in between the spiritual dimension or, or what Christians would call a spiritual dimension or the astral dimension and the physical dimension, but they're from right here. They live in the middle of the earth. They live in the oceans. Um so I start realizing these are not space aliens. Um, not only are they not from outer space, they're from right here. And these creatures are taking my soul out of my body. They're taking my soul out of my body. They're putting it into other bodies. And um, I get to the point where I understand that they're actually trying to reverse engineer the human soul. And at that point, I realize, wait a minute. Why would a space alien be concerned with my essence, my soul, my consciousness, uh, what I am outside of the body? And that's when I started realizing that they were lying and that it was a lot of deception and manipulation going on. And to make it kind of a, a shorter story, um, during this time, I was actually going through a spiritual crisis. Um, they had basically walked me down the road, which started with the new age thinking, and they walked me down the road of uh, um, these aliens, these non-human intelligence. They like to claim that they created us. Um, they will claim they created us, and they will claim not only did they create us, but they created all of our world religions in order to control us. And so this is something that made me start questioning the entire everything that I had been taught since I was a child. Everything about Christianity is the Bible true and real? Is Jesus even anything? You know, is there a God? Um, I went from having a, the faith that could move a mountain to being walked down this path of doubt and we created you, we created all the religions, it's all a big lie, it's just us. And by the way, we have you here trapped on a prison planet in a reincarnation cycle, and uh, you're never getting out. So this is their message. And um, let me let me throw something in there, uh, because mm -hmm. it actually helps bring back a memory for me as well that I'd like to share with you. Uh, 
whether we could say it adds to the perspective of what you're saying. There was one particular individual one time that shared with me that, uh, and this was when I was going through being asked some specific questions about, um, you know, how would you answer these particular entities? Uh, one of them claiming to be Ra uh, that was down in Egypt that still lived. Uh, he had a representative here i should say he claimed to be robbed but he had his representative speaking with allegedly i should say i'll say allegedly speaking with some government entities and that their plan was to come and introduce themselves to humanity in 2026 whether or not that'll ever happen or not i have no idea but uh this is what was being said this is why i find it interesting what you're saying there they said that what they're they said what they're going to do is they're going to tell the humanity that they actually were the ones that created them, that they created all the religions, they created Jesus, they created Muhammad, uh, they created Buddha, etc. Every one of these figures were people that they brought into this world to be able to manipulate these religions. But in one particular case that I found fascinating was they said that they were having a difficulty uh, dealing with the cross and this resurrection of Jesus. They were still trying to figure out how to how to be able to explain that to the human race when they come. How, what, what were they going to do to convince the Christians that this did not happen in the way that they thought? Uh, I found, I mean, this just kind of blew me away. It, you know, I was I was being given supposedly a a a, a, a conversation that really had happened with uh, people in the government that were sharing that information uh, back that that this was their plan that they were going to say that uh, they created all these religions, et cetera, and stuff, and. You know, in some cases, you can't help but wonder if there's not some truth in what they're saying, uh, because we do have a lot of, uh, you know, religious views in this world today. And the question is, is I, or I should say, how could we say that every single one of them is correct in the first place? But at the same time, one thing that always stuck with me is that there's got to be a truth somewhere. There's got to be a truth somewhere. But at the end of the day, this whole idea, though, was that when this these entities come in 2026, it, it was to be able to take over humanity. Of course, they're wanting to, uh, again, allegedly, they wanted to lower the population uh, on this earth dr dr dramatically before they actually come. I don't know if any of that's really true or not, but it does kind of ring true to some of the things that you're saying, is what I, is, I guess is what I'm getting at. Yeah, that's really interesting. So. I know what my opinion is on this, but I'd love to hear from you. Do the intel people know that these creatures are lying, or are they buying it? I have. There's two sides to that story. There is one group that does not buy it at all, and they consider that they. It, they'll even say like this. They'll say there are certain entity groups out there that will appear to be benevolent. But yet they know they work with the reptilians. The reptilians, from what I understand, are the largest population of entities that there are uh, anywhere and everywhere. They're the ones allegedly that are trying to take over this planet. And uh, in fact, I was referred to that movie uh, that they came out with back in the 80s, but then they did a remake of it. Oh, gosh, what was the name of that? Uh, it's a series they did where it's like these alien spaceships come and they hover over the cities. They look human, but they're actually reptilian in disguise. And Was uh, it V? Yeah. The was v. it called V? Yes, yes. Yeah. And I was told that, that as strange as that movie may seem, they said that's pretty much what you could anticipate that would happen, uh, that it'd be similar to that, that they will come with great technology for healing, uh, that, you know, we're supposed to be going through another maybe series. I won't use those words there because it flags us if we do, but another series of, of sicknesses, we should say. Uh, but they'll have the answer to that for the people, and they will look like they're here, for the, that they're real saviors at the end of the day. Um, but that's just, that's what I've heard. And But there are some sides of, the, of, of people in government that really believe that they're true. And um, 
you know, and when I say government, that's not necessarily in your presidential circles and things like that. These are these are more of the private entities and behind the scenes, even the intelligence community. I mean, we do have military bases that they work with with these entities, such as Dulce in New Mexico. Um, this this whole thing about um, uh, Area 51, that was moved a long time ago. That's not even really used any longer. It's up in Utah now. Uh, and they've been, been able to keep that one under wraps pretty pretty well. But um, some hideous things go on. And some of the, in fact, I saw that you had a document on your Twitter page of uh, the Arabic language showing different types of figures and the different heads and things like that. And the odd thing is, this these are things that are real. They're not just fairy. Yes, I've seen them. I've seen them. <laughs> exactly, right? So, and I've never personally myself, I mean, I've got friends that have seen this stuff firsthand, so I've heard a lot about it, uh, different ones that have seen different entities, and uh, always hear that they have a very foul odor is the one thing I hear consistently. And it doesn't matter which one you're looking at, they all have that foul odor from what I understand. So anyway, continue on. They do. So um, interesting. So yeah, I was wondering, um, because what I've noticed is a lot of the Intel people are uh, Freemason, Rosicrucian, Scientology, yes. and uh, people will laugh at this. And, and they, they a lot of times they even deny it. But that those religions are all the inversion of Christianity. So most of those are... Um, the serpent was the good guy trying to bring humans um, technology and knowledge and trying to release us, you know, from the um, tyrant God of the Old Testament. And so in a lot of a lot of Intel people have embraced these um, secret societies. And so I always wonder, I always I think that they know exactly what this is, or at least these people seem to know exactly what this is. And they're just embracing it. They've chosen a side. And yeah. um, the high, the higher circles of that, yes, it is such a small minority group that know that this is evil. Uh, and even when I began to deal with some of this, you know, I had to really work diligently to try to get some of these folks to realize, you know, look, this is you're not dealing with anything good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but, you know, sometimes that's not as easily done. But you're right. Freemasonry. Uh, all these different um, uh, circles. And it's always that higher secret society group that are involved in it. Right. And, and the lower level people have no idea. The lower level people will laugh and they'll say, that's not what we do at all. That's not true. Right. He's right. fine. Um, I, I understand. And I'm not saying every Freemason has chosen this route at all. Um, but the upper echelon of our Intel community certainly has. And again, they've, they've made their choice. Um, I mean, they're so heavily in bed with these entities that they 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 don't have a way out at this point. Um, they're in so deep. They don't have a way out. That's my personal opinion. So um, I agree. Yeah. So I don't remember where I was going with it, but um, I think you asked me something about aliens and demons. So I end up um, without getting into a lot of details. I ended up really pushing back on these abductions. I realized what is what what is happening you know, why are space aliens transferring my soul, my essence, my consciousness out of my body? And they they really seem to be wanting to reverse engineer the soul or trying to create a soul. I just knew that they were heavily interested and that they were um, trying to use technology almost to see if they could create one. Um, so I ended up, again, it took me an embarrassing long amount of time <laughs> considering my own background, I end up pushing back on the aliens. And I start realizing these are not aliens. What are they? What are they doing? What's happening here? What, what is this really? And I've now, talked to, I've now talked to several abductees who will say this very same thing. But it was almost like as long as I, it, it wasn't almost like for me. Um, it was when, I, as long as I was going along with this narrative the aliens are here for us. They're going to send us to 5D. They're here as our benefactors. Um, they're going to save us someday. This Galactic Federation stuff, I mean, you name it, that it. That's all propaganda. And I was buying it. And as long as I bought it, and as long as um, I accepted that, everything was fine. But the minute I started pushing back on the narrative and pushing back during abductions and, and um, being uncooperative as much as I could be, 
because they have you under a lot of control when you're in their environment. But as much as I could be, um, I ended up getting kicked up the food chain to uh, supervision, for lack of a better term. And what I realized very quickly was that supervision was demonic, um, that these were demons. Um, again, the demon, and it's my personal opinion from my own experience that demons are not aliens and aliens are not demons. However, I am now of the opinion that they are definitely working on the same team. Uh, they play together. Um, right. I put demons higher up the food chain than any of your average everyday um, alien. And um, so I get handed off and I start having some experiences um, with these animal head looking creatures. And I would put those animal head looking creatures actually maybe more mid level, low to mid level on the food chain. Um, and then that didn't work out so well. And I ended up um, with reptilian creatures who resemble the stranger things monster. And they're somewhat, they're, they're somewhat, um, between the stranger things monster and Freddy Krueger. And they have this very, um, uh, melted crinkly looking reddish to pink skin. They, it looks like maybe they were in a fire, but it doesn't look like fire damage. That's just kind of what their skin looks like. And I end up with one of these creatures actually, um, as near as I can tell, being inhabited by a demonic entity. And this demon actually told me his name was Baphomet. Um, so this is the claim. So I have an entity claiming to be Baphomet. Now, do I know that this entity was Baphomet? I do not. Um, it's been said to me that entities who try to claim a higher entity don't fare very well and that um, they actually can be subject to severe punishment for claiming to be something that they're not. But th then again, they also lie. They're very deceptive. So whatever. This entity tells me its name is Baphomet. And these reptilian entities, so I've encountered these reptilian entities separate just as reptilians. And I've encountered these entities also inhabited by this demon who calls himself Baphomet. So this entity um, ends up, and I'm just going to say the word punishment. I end up going through severe punishment by this entity um, for not going along with this program. Um, this punishment uh, caused me extreme uh, psychological damage. And um, I, I ended up being terrified to go to sleep at night. It was extreme damage. It was very, very traumatizing. And it was on purpose and it was a punishment for not going with the program. So um, I've spent this, this the very last time I encountered, well, I can't say it was the last time, but the last time I was severely punished by these entities was in about March or April of 2023. And then I have spent the whole last year actually trying to stop the contact with any of these entities these reptilians, the greys, um, there's a mylabs component to it as well, which by the way, I think these reptilians claiming to be demons and with a demonic presence inside of them is actually a mylab. Um, and so I spent the whole last year trying to stop it. And I started with certain things and ended actually in about mm, February, March of this year, I actually went to deliverance trying to stop this. Um, so with me, when I first started realizing what was going on, I actually reached out to researchers. So when I realized what was going on, I was not involved whatsoever in any UFO topics, any alien topics. None of this had, none of it had ever crossed my mind. So my first exposure to it was very new age. These are aliens. They're upgrading us. You know, they're, we're going to 5D. They're going to come save us. You know, this whole bit of nonsense. And so other than that, I had no exposure to this topic. Um, when these one, one thing, Fringe, let me, uh, and I hope if I throw you off. No, uh, not at all. I'm, I'm trying to take point. notes so I can remember where I'm at. I get lost. I get lost and just start yeah. rambling. If I do that with my wife, she gives she she takes a stick. Well, she don't really take a stick, but she'd like to take a stick and walk me because I'll, I'll cause her to lose her train of thought, and I hate doing that to somebody. But um, 
I want to say this, especially for Christians that are listening right now, you know, what Fringe is describing to you is really no different than what you go through in your own trials and battles. The difference is she can physically see and is going to those places where these entities are on a level that is that is more realistic, I guess you could say. But if you're going through something, let's say, for example, uh, you know, you're going through some kind of trial or battle, and it seems like the whole world's against you, everything's crumbling down around you. The same type of entities are also manipulating your world. It's still these demonic entities that are out there that manipulate your world. You're just not consciously aware of who's doing the manipulation. And I think that's something that people really underestimate. You, you'll you listen to something like what Fringe is explaining to you, and it's like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. Oh my, I would have plead the blood of Christ and everything. Well, the thing is, is you go through the same thing. You just maybe, or maybe not quite to that depth, but you just don't realize it that that's happening to you on another level. I mean, you think about these people that get into their sexual crazes and stuff, and I'll hear about men will tell me, you know, I'm going through this and I'm having this temptation. You're being attacked from the same realm. You just don't realize where it's coming from. So think about it. I, I agree with you 100%. You're absolutely right. I think that these entities are all around us. I think that um, they are manipulating us. They are controlling some of our thought process. And it just goes completely under the radar. And the only difference between me and anyone else out there is a, is in my degree of awareness. Because That's this was what I'm happening talking to about. Me. You're, You're aware absolutely of Absolutely correct. Um, this was happening to me my whole life, and it was going under the radar. It, my level of awareness was not what it is today. Now that I'm aware, I can see it, and I can anticipate it, et, et cetera. But I, I think we're all... Um, well, we all get assigned an angel and a, and a devil. And, and I'm just, you know, I, I don't know how literal that is, but there's an angel on one side and there's a devil on the other side. I, I, you're, you look old enough to know about that cartoon. Do you remember that cartoon? Angel would sit on one shoulder and a devil would sit on oh, the yeah. other shoulder. Oh, yeah. And I think I, the I angel's job. I got you by job, several years. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many. Um, the angel's job is to help lead us to the light, but they are very subtle and they're not going to grab you um, by the throat and drag you to the light. They want you, you have to do it for yourself. You have to make your own right. decisions and choices. But on the other hand, the demonic side, it's by hook or by crook. That you're they will lie, cheat, and steal to get you to their side. So there is a difference in how these entities deal with us. And um, I agree with you a hundred percent. They are all around us all the time. And it's a degree of awareness. And I think it's very interesting. I interviewed a Muslim gentleman, two gentlemen who were Muslims, they were brothers. And they said to me, I don't know what's going on in the West, but we are taught this as children. And yeah, if yeah. you're taught as a child, hey, this was is there's an unseen realm all behind all, all around us. You know, not to scare or frighten a child. Children believe in all kinds of things anyway, right? There's an unseen realm. It's the dark side to get you on that direction. It's a light um, job to get you in that direction. If we just knew this, but at least for me, and maybe it was my denomination, you know, whatever it was, I was not taught these things. I was taught, you know, put some, put your blinders on, keep your nose to the grindstone and you're going to heaven. That's what I was taught. Don't look over there. You know, Satan can only attack you if you give him attention. Um, I could have even been one of those Christians who said, uh, if you just cry out in the name of Jesus, or if you just had enough faith, you know, I, I don't remember being that person, but I very easily could have been that person. So I think you bring up an excellent point. And these are all things, it's a very interesting interview, because these are all things that um, people in ufology will laugh at and, um, you know, they deal with the nuts and bolts. They deal with consciousness. They want to talk about consciousness a lot and they want to talk about space aliens, but they laugh at people like me who started out believing this was space aliens. And I have now come all the way back around to realize these are not space aliens at all. Um, they're working for the demons directly, and this is a battle for the human soul, period. That's what they're about. And mm -hmm. 
I, I get laughed at a lot. I get made fun of. I get told, you know, I don't know, you're a stupid redneck or a dumb Christian or whatever. Of course, that's what you believe because you're a Christian. And to me, that's a cop out because I was a Christian, but I thought they were space aliens. I did not believe that they were demons or related to demons in any way until I went through the process of realizing these things are trying to lead me away from um, the truth, lead me down a road of deception and get me onto their team, basically, is what it was. And and they almost got me. They almost won. Well, they almost I mean, Think about it. The scripture talks about, you know, that Satan can come as an angel of light. You know, and and the thing here's what happens, and and I know this from all the study of ancient documents that I have done. There is so much more information that is available uh, that most most people never even dream of, or they maybe they can't read that language, and they so therefore they don't understand it. But we read that passage. You know, Satan will. Have, can come and appear as an angel of light. And we just take it passively, you know, like, okay, well, that preacher's a devil because he's trying to be an angel of light. They're not taking that literal uh, possibility of what that is, uh, you know, I mean, but yet they'll read every day, you know, uh, Daniel talks about this beast with all these heads on it, or the book of Revelation talks about a beast with multiple heads and Leviathan, the seven-headed dragon, and it's there everywhere you turn around. Um, and uh, the, the Jewish people, they know that the seraphim is not, they, they'll tell you, it, it, they actually believe that to be reptilians. Some rabbis actually believe that. Uh, now, the only thing that I, I disagree with them when they think it's a good thing, because no, I don't agree that a reptilian is a good thing. Uh, which that brings me to a question for you. You've talked about reptilians a little bit. Can you share with us a little bit about the the way they can appear to you if they so choose? Yeah, so I, I would actually say this about all of these so-called alien creatures. Um, they So what they do, near as I can tell, near as I can tell, uh, most of my information comes from my own experiences. And again, it, it took me many, I, I'm at 300 or so just for the last two years, um, not including the shadow beings that I have my whole life. Um so near as I can tell, um, they're actually just pulling an image out of our own minds. So they'll pull an image out of your mind. They rifle through your mind like it's a Rolodex. They pull an image out. Um, they know what that image means to you. They know your emotions that are tied to that image or that person. or, or And then that's what they project. And so they can project themselves as a religious figure. They can project themselves as a dead um, relative. They can project themselves as as your husband, as a movie star, um, as your next door neighbor, as your boss. And a lot of times what they're doing when they're projecting, in my personal opinion, is they're trying to just get our cooperation. They're trying to. So near as I can tell with their mind control situation, was, which feels very much like being under anesthesia. If we become too emotional or too frantic or too um, or, or we recognize that something doesn't look right. Um, we can actually get out of that mind control, even if it's temporary. And so when we have these extreme emotions or this extreme fright or this extreme, oh my gosh, what's happening? That's when we can break out of their control. And so near as I can tell, they're doing this just to make their job easier. So if you have a gray doing an abduction, they're going to pull an image out of your mind. It might be your dead grandmother and they're, you're going to think you're dreaming anyway. And there's my great dead grandmother, and she wants me to walk down the hallway and get on top of this table so there can be a medical exam. It might not make sense to you, but you just think it's a dream. And it's my dead grandmother, right? Uh, so wow. that's near as I can tell what they're doing is they're pulling images out of our minds. They're projecting anything they want. They can make us see anything they want. And um, that's how they get their job done. How, how would you like to know how truthful that is from an ancient document? Oh, I would love to hear it. I would love to hear All it because right. I've now come across, you know, some people in ufology, some researchers and stuff. I've now come across a lot of cooperation for my own conclusions, which, you know, people will say it's confirmation bias. So you are 100 percent accurate. All right. And I'm going to show you where that is. OK. And uh, in the Egyptian writings that they had discovered at the place called Nag Hammadi, uh, 
that was referred to as Gnostic uh, Goss or Gnostic writings originally. The very doctor, and I forget her name. I don't. I, I've, I've actually saw an interview she did more recently here. She's in her seventies now, close to eighty. She said, "I need to make a correction of what I." She said, "I'm the one that was guilty of calling that the the Gnostic Gospels or the Gnostic writings." There, she said. I didn't know when I first looked at them, when we were first looking at them, and I think it was Harvard or no Princeton University that actually first examined these. And she was uh, the, the director of the, uh, the ancient uh, uh, writing studies there. And she said that um, in my work that I did, I, I realize now as time has gone on, five of those books should have actually just been called the, the Christian Gospels. She said, we were in a hurry to try to figure out what to call them. So she said, five of those we do know are very accurate. She said, no, not to say the other ones are not. They are historical documents. Uh, they're mostly written in the Greek language, which I do not do Greek. I do Hebrew. Um, but she said the one thing that was fascinating, though, is or not? I'm sorry, getting away from that now. Going back just to the fact of the validity of the of the uh, work, I always look at it from a historical standpoint because I do ancient document studies. And when I began to examine one of the books in there, which would have been one of those Gospels, it brings up the story of what we call Genesis six. Um, the narrative there, where it can be construed either way, but. It's actually, in Genesis, it's referred to as Nephilim, not Nephilim. Nephilim is spelled differently. It's one extra yod in there. Nephilim, or the fallen angels, as they call them, is without that extra yod uh, between the Fe and the Lamed. In this particular document, they come to the women of that day there that were part of Adam's daughters, and they tried to convince them to sleep with them, but they, they wouldn't fall for it. It wasn't their, wasn't their husband's. And uh, so it says later in the document that when they came back the second time, they appeared to them as if they were their husbands. They were able to cause their mind to believe that it was actually their husband. And that's the reason why they cohabitated with them and got pregnant with them and brought forth what they called the Nephilim, their children. And uh, so there is documentation that supports exactly what you're saying. Okay, and that's very interesting because that's something I have never heard. However, oh, actually, what were the five books that they thought should have been Christian? I, instead she of didn't Christian? say the exact ones. I believe, though, uh, from my own research, I would think it would have been Philip, Thomas, uh, and I know those two there. There's, I don't know for sure what five that she chose on there, so I'd have to go back and look. I know there's, this, I think, oh, I do, James. James is another one. There's a book called The Secret Book of James. And she uh, she clarifies that one about James because she quotes from Mark where Jesus is telling them he speaks to the crowds in parables, but to them only the secret teachings uh, because it wasn't meant for them to understand that. And right. so she examines some of that. I don't know if she considers the Gospel of John or the secret, it's actually called the secret book of John. Uh, I believe if I remember right, it was in the secret book of John. It could have been from the book of James where I actually saw that uh, near the end of the book. But uh, but it always stuck with me that they were able to do that. And I had heard from the intelligence world that it's not that they shape shift per se, but uh, the way that it was described to me is that they cause your mind to believe that they look like a different image. That's right. That's exactly what I think. You you will hear people saying that they're able to shape shift. I don't know if they are. I I just it's my opinion that they're they're just projecting an image that they want us to see. Right. And so not knowing the story that you just told, there is a gentleman by the name of Ted Rice. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of Ted Rice. Um, if you're familiar it with Carla, familiar, but I'm not sure. So there's an old researcher. She's now uh, passed. Her name is Carla Turner. And she did a book called Masquerade of Angels. And this book is about this the uh, Ted Rice. This gentleman, Ted Rice, uh, was a psychic medium his whole life. And um, he had spirit guides and et cetera, et cetera. He was very, very uh, well-respected in his field. He gave people good and true and real information. 
And to make it short, he got to a time in his life when he realized that there was a lot more going on than just spirit guides. And um, he actually recalls an incident where he and his grandmother are abducted onto a spaceship. And I, I say that term sounds so silly, but um, with reptilian beings and the reptilian beings were trying to copulate with his grandmother and his grandmother was refusing. She was screaming and she was refusing and she was uh, in control of herself and saying no. And next thing he knew, and he was just a child at this time, next thing he knew, he looked over and it was his grandfather. It was the grandmother's husband. And they were engaged in the act um, of sexual intercourse. And so that's exactly what happened in this book. And this is a real life incident that he recalls. And so um, they started as a reptilian and she was freaking out and screaming and saying no. And they, all they did was make her believe that this was uh, her husband. Right. And next thing you know, she's saying yes. And so that's fascinating that you just brought up that it's wow. in the Gnostic Gospels. I've never seen it in the Gnostic. I, I haven't done a deep dive into the Gnostic Gospels, but that's very, very interesting. So this is what they do. I mean, this is what they do. Um, that's my personal opinion. Um, are there some shapeshifters out there? I don't know. There, I suppose there could be. Um, to get back to something you said, you said something about raw. And um, so this idea that they're going to be coming back um, to save us from ourselves is very much alive. It's still alive and well. It's still being propagated. Um, there is an entity who calls herself the lady, or she is also known as Hathor. She also calls herself Hathor. She's been in touch with Chris Bledsoe. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Chris Bledsoe case, but it's a very similar uh, narrative that the aliens are going to come back in the year of 2026 around Easter time, I believe. And I could have that wrong, um, but there's going to be some type of an incident. I believe he was shown a nuclear incident that there's going to be some nukes exchanged and these entities are going to save uh, human humanity from these nukes. and. Um, Separately from that, if you've heard of uh, David Jacobs and seen any of his research, yes. um, he will say the same thing. And so it's not necessarily the same exact narrative that's being told to Chris Bledsoe, but the entities are telling abductees, this is our plan. We're going for depopulation and there's going to be a crisis and then we're going to come in and, and save you from yourselves. And if you if you listen to a lot of abductees, it's a very anti-human and pro-alien narrative that they're pushing. And unfortunately, um, this is another reason why I get so much um, pushback, uh, because a lot of abductees um, believe that they're having positive experiences, that these aliens are here to uh, upgrade us. It's here for our own good. Uh, this is a good thing for us. Um, and when they hear me say that's a deception and a manipulation, I get told, you can't know that. That's only your experience. Just because you had a bad experience doesn't mean I'm having a bad experience. But if you look at the totality of the abduction research, there is no other logical conclusion. These entities are deceptive, they are manipulative, and they are creating these hybrid uh, beings these hybrids look very human now, by the way. They didn't used to, right. but they do now. And um, supposedly their entire plan is to take over, you know, humans. And there will be no more Homo sapiens sapiens. It, it, we will evolve into something else. Um, a lot of people, especially in the intelligence community, think that this is a good thing. Oh, this is great. We're going to evolve. We're going to be upgraded. We're going to be psychic. We're going to have telepathy. And I can promise you it is not a good thing. This is not a good thing at all. And um, I get a lot of pushback on that, but I'm a blunt and frank uh, I person. Agree. I agree 100%. And, uh, <laughs> it is what it is. I'm just here to say it like it is. Oh. And um, yeah. It's, here, small, here's anyway. what's really sad, Fringe, is I mean, think about the biblical aspect. It's so, it'll be so close, it would deceive even the elect if it were possible. So 100%. it's going to, you know, to me, there's going to be such a realistic aspect to this, even when they come. I mean, 
you know, and yet Jesus even warns you. He says, if they say he's out in the desert, if he's here in the secret chambers or whatever, don't believe it. Um, I'm actually, there's something that come to my mind the other day, and I haven't had a chance to research it yet, but I'm going to go back to that particular subject and really try to do a deeper dive into that, because I think it's dealing more, not just with a physical um, anointed one, so to speak, when we say it like Antichrist, because you got to remember the word Christ is anointing. But I have a feeling it has to do, too, when people are, this is a new thing going on now, where people are saying that everyone is the Christ, it's because we are anointed. Um, you know, so I, I haven't had a chance to really dive into that yet, but I do intend on going into that subject uh, before long, at least exploring it. Uh, maybe I don't know if I'll speak on it publicly yet, but we'll see when that time comes. But I do believe that there that there's really a serious and major manipulation and and the very fact that they can cause you to believe that they are someone good, I, I could easily see how that they could manipulate a resurrection and make it appear as if the loved ones of these people are coming because there's enough of them out there. And then being able to manipulate your mind, make you think that it's your loved one resurrecting uh, and that this uh, beautiful millennial reign is about to start how many people would end up being duped right into falling in for that and accepting well, it because it appears real? I mean, since we're going down that road, do you believe in the rapture? I I have differing opinions on that. I used to be a very staunch 100% rapture believer. Uh, okay. and, but I, I do see, too, that this could easily be mimicked uh, and, and, and quite frankly, could be manipulated to such a point there were people who think they're going in a rapture when they're really not. Uh, I, I can, I can, so, so I can see this both ways. So you mentioned something earlier when you were talking about raw and all the world religions, et cetera, you said, you know, could there be some truth there? And, and I, it's just been my personal experience. I mean, even when you're dealing with a guy from uh, an Intel agency, they're not just making up all, it's not just all lies. They're basing right. the lie on, on truth. So they'll give you maybe an 80% truth and then the 20% is to their own benefit. And that's where the lie is. And that's why it's so difficult to recognize is because a lot of what they're saying is absolutely true. And so um, now we have, we now have Christian influencers who are convinced that the alien thing is a hundred percent um blue book it's a hundred percent a lie there are no aliens and not that there are no aliens let me say this right let me get it right so when we see the aliens coming back that is actually jesus and his angels and we are going to go to war with them because we think they're aliens so imagine this scenario where the aliens come and a bunch of people and Christian influencers say that those are, in fact, our real saviors. There's a lot of Christian influencers now believing that Jesus was an ET, because what do they do? They mimic the virgin birth. They mimic uh, with their hybrids, taking yeah. women who maybe have not had any sexual contact with anyone, and th those women are suddenly pregnant. So they do a lot of mimicking. What they do lie and deceive about is always based in truth. Um, so I have thought to myself, um, could there be a, a, a fake rapture where a bunch of abductees are just snatched up into the ships and Christians actually think that they were left behind and they are not actually a child of God because they're still here. So I, I look at my own spiritual crisis where I went into believing these things own me and I, I never believed they owned me, but I did question um, the entirety of what I have been taught. I, I had to stop and say, am I a Christian because it's true or because this is what I was taught my whole life? Right. Um, I had to look at the inversion. I had to look at, was Satan actually the good guy? Uh, what about Yahweh? Uh, what about Christ? You know, I looked at all of that stuff. They actually walked me down that road. They held my hand and walked me down the road that it was all a deception. And so um, when I think about how close I came to buying, and, and I'm, I'm a suspicious person by nature. I know when I'm out conducting an investigation, I know they're lying. I know you're lying to me, but that doesn't mean uh, this crime didn't occur, but I can tell you're lying about something, right? It took me so long 
uh, to realize that these things were full of lies and deception. It's embarrassing how long it took me. And that's why I say, if they can do it to me, they can do it to anybody. Yes. Um, and could there be a false rapture? Is the thought of the idea of the rapture actually seeded by them to make Christians believe that Jesus came and took a bunch of people and I'm still here. So I must not have been a child of God. Um, these are just things I think about. I'm not saying that this is going to happen or that this is real, um, but it should certainly should be on the table. Um, I, I then, agree. I agree 100 percent that I believe that they are going to try to mimic a rapture uh, there. I think where the big problem comes in, and this is what really kind of made me step back a little bit. And I and I actually got to where I wouldn't even speak about it really publicly that much because there's so much debate and, and Christians, they'll basically you think they're going to choke each other out over the whole rapture issue. It's not that I don't believe that 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 the Heavenly Father eventually is going to cap uh, to 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 take and hide away his children and get them away, but he never says that it would be against what man what happens on this earth with man. I believe he only he really speaks about it when it comes to his wrath. When basically when he's had enough of all this deception that we have gone through, and he decides that okay, look, I got to get you guys out of here. And we're going to wipe this off because nobody else is paying. You know, in other words, it's become so demonic on this earth. Um, and he's done everything he knows to do to try to get the people's attention. That seems to be more realistic, I guess, in one way. Uh, but it's easy to deceive the people. In fact, it's interesting you bring this up, too, because years ago, uh, I had a dream, and in this dream, these people came to me, and they said, Steve, come on, it's the rapture, it's time to go, and something just didn't sit right, and I looked at them, and I said, no, I said, I'm not going with any of you, and they said, are you serious? It's the rapture, we got to go, and I said, no, so, I said, something's not right, mm -hmm. I said, because this isn't the way it's going to be, mm -hmm. and then suddenly, it all changed. And then I knew I was right. Right. Uh, That's interesting. But yeah, it's, so it just goes to show, you know, that, that, that what people don't understand is the Satan, and I'll just use it as a general term, Satan, because people, a lot of times people limit that to just one individual entity. Uh, I don't think it's like that. I think that there, we, we use that as a general term but you're dealing with every type of entity, spirit, being, uh, you know, uh, what we would call alien entity. Well, we only say that because we just don't really know where they're from or who they are. We just know that they're not part of the human race. There's so much deception that's there. It's just waiting. And I'm afraid that a lot of people are going to get caught up into that. Um, yeah, I agree frankly, with you. Yeah. Maybe it's people like yourself that have that have been allowed to go down this rabbit hole to really get a grasp on it, to understand this isn't a good thing, to have someone finally come out and say that publicly, this isn't a good thing, this is very evil what's happening, to help break that cycle of the people out there that are, like you said, this more like a new age thing. Oh, this is great, because I have run across those communities as well. You know, they, they're, in fact, a good friend of mine, he really believes, no, but Steve, there's there's really good entities out there. I said, okay, well, whatever you, I'm, I'm sure maybe there is, but I don't know of any of myself, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, so I'm in a community um, with other uh, abductees. And what happens with an abductee is you get literally get taken out of your environment and placed into their environment against it. For me, it's against my will. Some people do volunteer for this, by the way. Um, and, 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 you know, more power to them if that's what they want to do. Uh, but for those of us who are being taken against our will out of our environment and into another environment that belongs to them, um, on whose planet is that okay? And so what happens is, we humans will bend over backwards to make excuses for these aliens. And it's incredible to me when I first found this UFO community, I, um, I, I'm a pretty, I think I'm a black and white thinker. Like this is not good. This is not acceptable. This is not okay. And when I came across people who were actually making excuses, including other abductees, 
uh, making excuses for these entities, I um, I can be very sympathetic to that because I know how good they are. I used to think they were our space brothers too. I used to think it. That's what I used to think. And again, it took me an embarrassingly uh, an embarrassing uh, amount of time to realize that that was not the case. So I can have sympathy with that. I understand things like Stockholm syndrome. I understand why the human ego needs to make it okay. I I understand that as humans, if we're not selected for a positive experience that actually reflects on us as human beings in our, in our own, um, in our own ego. And so if you're not selected for something um, positive, that means you're not good enough for being for, for a positive experience. And so it gets very personal. And so on one hand, I I very much understand and I sympathize with people who believe that this is good, that this is okay, that, you know, it doesn't really hurt all that bad. You know, sometimes they're nice to me. Okay. Those things are true. But if a human being came into your home and snatched your child out of the bedroom, which is what they do, they, this begins in childhood. If they snatch your child out of the bedroom and take them away, is that okay with anyone? you know, anyone at all? The answer is absolutely not. But because we have decided that these beings um, somehow, I I don't know when this happened, but no, I wasn't there. We decided that these beings have a higher consciousness and that um, they are unknowable to us, that they're so high above us that um, we can't understand them. We can't know their motives. Maybe they don't even know right from wrong. Maybe they have no idea about us and our culture and what's important to us and that it's not okay to snatch us from our beds. And what happens is we end up coming up with so many excuses and we bend over backwards to make excuses for these creatures, which makes no sense to me at all. I understand the whole thought process of, well, maybe this, maybe that. But when you look at the evidence and you look at the abduction research and you talk to enough people, you will, there, there, there is no excuse. You cannot bend over backwards enough to excuse what's happening on these ships. Horrific things are happening on these ships. When you think of the human trafficking that's happening on earth, there is something very similar happening on these ships to our children. Things that are not acceptable in anyone's world are happening on these ships. But what what happens in the abductee and the experiencer community is everyone wants to have been selected for a positive experience because it does reflect somehow, just like with Christians who would tell me, well, then you don't have enough faith. It reflects negatively on the person who's having a negative experience. And the new age people, which is very prevalent, by the way, will tell abductees, if you just raised your vibration, this wouldn't be happening to you. If you weren't a fearful person, this wouldn't be happening to you. If you just change your mindset and you stop being afraid, then they'll go away. It's a very similar message, very strangely similar message, that if you're having a a negative experience, it's because of you that you're having a negative experience. And sorry about that, you know, sorry for you but my experiences are positive. And so it's, it's a very strange thing. Um, and it just reeks of deception and, and manipulation. And it's fascinating that most, I would say most people don't see it. So that's where we're at. Uh, and, and to think that it's going to get any better is probably wishful thinking. It's just going to get worse in my opinion. I agree with you, and and I know we're we're probably have to cut this and bring bring you back on another time. Uh, I have wondered also, though, just in closing, could it be that some of these people that talk about having their great experiences uh, because they do have the ability to project the thoughts in your mind to go with? Um, I know from. People that work with uh, advanced entities, I've learned this from the Israelis, uh, that uh, they have the ability to, to, to scan your brain. Like when you go out and you come back, they scan your mind to know who you've talked to, uh, what you've said, et cetera. They, can, they have that kind of a technology to be able to do that. So my thought is, I wonder too, is if they couldn't implant thoughts in your mind that when you come back, oh, that was a great ride, enjoyed it, had fun and everything, when you were probably over on the other side screaming at what they were doing to you. 
Well, that's exactly what they do. And that's why I have sympathy and understanding for people because it is a massive mind control. Um, they try to make every abductee believe that this is a spiritual experience, that this is good for you, that we're upgrading you, we're doing this for you, we're your friends. They tell abductees that um, they're uh, our soul family. Uh, you're part of our soul family and we're just helping you. You know, we're we're giving you a surgery that's good for you. Um, they have healed people. You know, the aliens have healed people. Now, from my point of view, it's always for their own benefit um, because you're useful to, for them a, a little bit longer for, for however long. Um, but they've also killed people. And so, um, you know, are there positive entities out there? I think there are. I mean, if we look at the Bible, we have messengers of God. We have angels. Sure. Um, we have angels engaged in spiritual warfare. Uh, against the negative entity. So I absolutely do believe that there are positive entities out there. I do understand why uh, most abductees don't see through the facade. And it is a massive amount of mind control and post-hypnotic suggestion and, and all of that. Um, I mean, it's MK Ultra on steroids from the aliens. Y yes, it is. And uh, I mean, you know, it's just speaking about this one last biblical one out for you as well. Gabriel, when you know, when he's trying to get to Daniel, he says, I heard your prayer at the beginning, but it took me 21 days. He had to fight his way there. That's not right. I mean, everybody wants to think, you know, it's like, oh, you know, he must have had his spiritual sword and his literally light or something. Who, kn who knows what people are thinking in their minds, but they're real entities. And, you know, what people don't understand, your eyes are designed to pick up the dimension you're living in from the perspective that your eyes can see. But yet, in that same reality that you're sitting in, there's another world all around you, but your eyes just don't have that ability to channel it, you know. And we know this from television. We know it from, you know, you could be sitting, I could be doing, like we're doing this broadcast right now. You're coming to here live on this screen where I can record it and capture it. But you're somewhere else out in the country somewhere. I have no idea exactly where, you know. But yet your image has come through a network system and reappeared upon the screen because science has figured out how to put that technology together. Well, in that same world that you have traveled to get here, that exists, uh, you know, just like in the old days of the radio back before you, you remember the little handheld little radio that we would walk around a little, we called it the transistor radio. And um, I remember it back in the early seventies and stuff. Uh, I had one probably in 72 or something like that. And, you know, it had only an antenna, but I could turn it on and I could program that to a radio station and hear the voice of the guy, but yet you don't see his voice and I couldn't hear it with my ears, but his voice was coming through the air regardless. And that antenna would grab that airwave, put it into that system and somehow or another magically brings his voice out just the way it sounds on the other end. So that's the amazing parts of technology, but in reality, what we can't hear with our ear is still in our world. So imagine what's in the other world, demonically speaking, we'll say. But like you said, there is, and I do know that for a fact, there is a difference between demons, evil spirits, and that of entities that are actually in human bodies, or I say not human bodies, but physical bodies of different types and sorts. It really does exist. It's just we are not seeing it whether they don't want to be seen in some cases, because if they were here, you would see them anyway, or there's some that are where they can just, you don't see them at all unless they want you to see them, that type of thing. So it's a really crazy world that we're living in, and people just have no idea how strange that is. But you have, by God's grace, been given that glimpse. But, you know, I think, and I would say this to you, I think he's really proud of you because he saw that even though you went through what you've gone through, you never cracked. You were like Job. He was pleased knowing that you mm. would come out on the other side. A strong oh, I cracked. Story. I cracked. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I think I'm, I'm back. To, I'm mostly I'm mostly back together. Well, we'll say it like this here. You're also more enlightened to what is really true. And Absolutely that, true. That, that Absolutely. can also help as well to be able to discern the difference between truth and lies. Uh, and that can really be helpful, especially in a manipulative, manipulative world. I think it's fascinating because a lot of people don't even know. Jeremiah wrote a very 
interesting passage that they don't translate into English very accurately. He said, but the lying pen of the scribe has made it a lie. Hmm. Now, what did he mean by that? I think that's why Jesus came along to help straighten up some of those issues, because he said, you've heard it said of them of old time, never said Moses. You've heard it said of them in old times, eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. He said, but I say unto you, love your enemy, do good to them that evilly use you and abuse you. You know, there's a lot of levels of that that a lot of people don't think of because we're just looking at the surface. We've never dealt with what you dealt with. Uh, or maybe in some cases, people don't even know they dealt with it because they've never become conscious to what they've gone through. That's another thing. Yeah, I, I think it's that's that's actually what it is. I think it's just a level of awareness. I think we're all dealing with this. And my husband actually came up with this the other day, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. He just said, you know what? We're all dealing with this. It's just that most people are completely unaware. And then yes. um, that leads me to wonder when, because I think we used to be aware, when did that get lost? Um, again, I, I told you, I spoke to a couple of Muslim gentlemen, they're taught as children uh, about this unseen realm. Um, it's not a surprise to them. And no. somewhere along the way, this was lost and we're not told this. And um, I think it could be very helpful to a lot of people to understand that this, the actual spiritual warfare that's going on behind the scenes well, we're just, you know, paying our bills and trying to get our kids to school. We have no idea yes. that we are, I think it was Michael Heiser who put it this way. We are both the pawns and the prize in this war. And yet we just live our lives in not having an understanding of what, what's actually going on. You brought up that story about Gabriel. Um, I was on another podcast and the gentleman's a Christian and um, when I told him, I told him that I was, I felt very betrayed by the church. Um, I felt betrayed because I was being told that you must not be a child of God or, and you must, you know, not be saved or, or you know, you're not right with Jesus. Um, but also I felt betrayed because where were my teachers? Who is responsible? And, and by the way, it's my responsibility to figure this out, obviously. But where are the teachers? Who? Where are the pastors? Why aren't they teaching us this? And I've now spoken to pastors who say that it, it's frowned upon. It's it's this topic is not accepted in the church that this is actually going on. It was actually this very same gentleman when I said, I said. I have been attacked by these shadow beings, which, by the way, I don't think I ever got to the part where these shadow beings have been um, seen using technology to go from an alien, gray alien being into a shadow being. And so if you were to and ask your technology, audience, you're right. The, the, the technology. technology is unbelievable. And, and some yeah. of the technology has been shared with government entities. They just never make it public. Oh, well, they have it, too. Um, and so they're using technology. Now, is every single shadow being a gray alien? I, obviously, I could not, not say that. But some shadow beings are gray aliens. And if you were to ask your audience, has anyone seen a UFO? You get some hands. Has anyone seen an alien? Very few hands. Right. Has anyone seen a shadow being or hat man? And a ton of hands are going to go up. Has anyone seen the lady, this entity? Um, a ton of people have seen these entities. And what we don't understand is it's all the same thing. And this is where people in ufology will get angry with me. And actually what they'll think is that I'm just not very bright. Um, it's all the same thing. And so when I come on here and say, I've been taken out of my bed by aliens, it's not much different than saying, in fact, it's no different than saying I've been attacked by a demon or I've been under spiritual warfare, I've been under spiritual attack. It is all the same thing. And it's just a level of awareness. Um, every That's single a, yes, one of us yes. is a prize in this war. Every single one of us. Yes. They want every single one of us. Well, I mean, think about it. Paul writes about he went up to the third heaven and saw things that it was unspeakable. And uh, but yet, if you go to read in some of these other writings where Paul also has written that he goes much further and he talks about those different realms and he talks about the different entities that control uh, the gates and what he was told to get through those gates. I mean, 
you know, is it 100% accurate? I'm not the one to here to judge to say what's accurate, what's not accurate. But the thing is, there's more in, in there's more to the things that happen on a spiritual level, just like Mark wrote about Jesus. So he, he spoke to the people, the public was spoken to in parables. You know, the deeper things um, were, were shared. Oh, and speaking of one of the other books, it was the book of uh, uh, Mary Magdalene. It was also considered a, a genuine book by that one particular scholar. Interesting. Um, so, so you're now bringing up a good point because I said, "Where are my teachers? Where was my teacher? Um, why didn't someone tell me about this?" Because I would not have gotten. I don't think I would have gotten lost down that road and come so close to cracking. Um, but now you just brought up, well, Jesus spoke in parables. That knowledge is not for everyone, exactly. and maybe the knowledge is not for everyone. Um, and they don't they don't know it as that and that's the whole thing you know i think in some some of the things that you've shared um there's writings out there that would probably better explain what you've gone through uh and this is why i don't look down on things like this and even the people that have gone through it that still don't understand that are still uh trying to figure these things out you know Somebody needs to be out there to say it, you know, that, no, you're not a bad person. You just happen to have a better uh, understanding and a reality of what you're going through. Whereas the person that's battling demons and thoughts and everything else that they're going through, it's the same entity. They just it can't. Is the they're not same seeing it. Thing. It is the same thing. Right. These so-called alien creatures are able to interact with us very easily in the physical realm. That's what yes. they're there for. The yes. other ones are are very, you know, much spiritual type entities. They're not, they can't as easily interact with us. They can't as easily take a woman's physical body and remove her eggs so that they can create hybrids, uh, you know, as a repeat of Genesis 6, if it ever stopped. Right. That's what these beings are there for. That's what they're doing. That's what they're, what, what do you think is happening in these UFOs? 80 Jesus. to 90% of the activity is abduction activity. Jesus said in the one famous passage in Matthew 24 that the things that happened in the days of, of Noah will happen again in this day we're living in. And, you know, if I really went into all those things that really happened, I mean, we just look at the surface. Oh, they learned how to plow with a plow instead of uh, having to go out there with a shovel and dig it up. No, the technology that was given was unbelievable to them mm -hmm. in that day and age there. So, and, and that's got an exchange on it. There is a price that you will pay for that technology. Yes, yes. And that's happening right now today. We are being given technology from these aliens. And the people who have signed up to accept this technology uh, from the aliens are going to pay a price for that. And this is why, you know, I spoke about other abductees. And, and I'll say that most of other abductees, they're there's a majority, it's something like 75 to 80% of abductees believe that this is a good thing that's happening to us. And um, the reason I am try to be so frank and honest is because I care. I care about them. Essentially, even if they don't know it, they're making a contract with these evil entities. Oh, oh, and they, that, and yeah, it is a contract that could very it's well very go into the afterlife and have a, a very high price to pay. And that's yeah. why I'm so adamant. And I, I take a lot of heat for this, but it's worth it because this is this is like I said, they want each and every one of our souls. This is not just about, oh, I got taken up into a spaceship and I'm special because I'm going to 5D. That's not what this is about. No, I think this interview is going to help a lot of people, and it may even help more people. I know there's somebody else that wrote me recently that wanted to share what had happened to them. And uh, because there's a lot of Christians that have gone through what you've gone through, and they've realized it maybe, and they're very fearful of being able to share their story. But I think that uh, this interview has done really well because we've been able to go down some of those uh, uh, rabbit holes as well as uh, sharing from a perspective biblically that helps people to understand a little bit better that it's not what they thought it was. And uh, and maybe it'll give some Christians a little bit more um, ability to, to not be so judgmental, you know. We do that a lot, don't we? 
We do it. I do it. We all do it. We're all guilty of it. Yes. Um, And uh, it's it's not a good thing. Not a good thing. No, it's not. It's not. Well, thank you so much, friends, for being on with us uh, this evening. Uh, it'll probably be Wednesday morning before this gets posted up on Israeli News Live. I'll do a little bit of editing, not editing the content per se, other than the dog door that time there. Uh, but uh, we'll get it up. Uh, I'll probably post it around midnight Tuesday, right around that time frame there. But I want to thank you for coming and sharing everything with us there. And I'll put in the description below for those of you that want to be able to, to contact French, I'll put her Twitter page in for you there uh, so you can reach out to her. And uh, be sure to send loving and encouraging messages. Uh, none of the, uh, if, you, if you, you're you going to be critical, I'll tell you, like my mother always said to me growing up, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. Don't, don't say it at all. And thank you so much for having me. You are a wealth of knowledge. Um, I, I really appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, friends. We'll stay in touch. Uh, look forward to it. To it. And, and we'll have to come back again. If you have time, we'll, we'll do it again eventually. I'd like to go into the human trafficking aspect of what I've heard you speak about. Uh, that would really be good to kind of go down that as well and uh, share. Let me throw time. out there very quickly as a teaser. I did not get into this on the other interview, but a lot of this trafficking is going straight to the reptilians. I know how crazy it sounds, but it's, no, it's true. It's the truth. Yeah. It's very true. And I know a lot of that information. So that'll be it'll be an exciting thing. And for you to say that, I, I appreciate that too. So we'll definitely let's plan it here in the next uh two or three weeks. If you've got the time, we'll do another one and we'll go into that subject as well. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you.